Good morning, saints, and welcome to our Sunday morning uh, Bible study for this uh, second Sunday after the Epiphany. Also, today we're remembering a man who God used for his purpose. We're remembering the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and so at worship today, uh, we will have a special sermon uh, entitled The Strength to Love Our Enemies because that's what uh, Dr. King taught and that was also based upon one of his books The Strength to Love which is a, a book of his sermons but all he was doing was echoing the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ love one another as God has loved you so, uh, saints, in terms of our Bible study for today, as I said, we're continuing with the book of Acts, the study of Acts 24. Uh, the theme of today's Bible study is the courage of impelling truth. The courage of impelling truth. Uh, but let's bow our heads in prayer, and then we'll talk a little bit about what the chapter is about. A little background. And uh, then we go, uh, we'll go from there. But let us pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, give us wisdom. Give us understanding. And help us, O Holy Spirit, to apply what we learn to daily living. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, uh, saints, in terms of chapter 24, a little background to remember Paul had, had gone down to Jerusalem uh, to worship in the temple. That's what he wanted to do. That's where the Spirit of God moved him to go. And when he went, of, cor of course, he ran into trouble there. Uh, the Spirit had warned him of that anyway, but he went anyway. And uh, he was arrested by the mob, and they were about to really, uh, I would say, kill him. But the Romans heard about it, and the Romans came and saved Paul. There was so much threats against Paul and trying to kill Paul that the Roman centurion, who was responsible for the life of his prisoners, even up to giving of his life, well... He decided to bring Paul to Governor Felix, especially after he found out that Paul was a Roman. That even made it more difficult for him. So Paul is then brought to Governor Felix, and uh, uh, this is where our story begins. Uh, and remember that they, uh, Governor Felix agrees to see Paul. Uh, but uh, he can't do anything until Paul's accusers arrive. Well, this is just when Paul's accusers arrive. So, excuse me. Oh, excuse me, saints. Uh, Paul is brought, by, brought to trial before Governor Felix and accused by the uh, Jewish religious leaders, led by a Roman lawyer, Tertullus. Tertullus. So, in this case, the uh, Jewish leader, leaders up, up, up their game. They said they're going to try to destroy Paul. But the Romans were always curious about, especially the centurion, is what had Paul done and why did they want to kill Paul? So saints, let's begin now with Acts 24, the courage of impelling truth. And we're looking at the whole chapter. First of all, verse 1. After five days, Ananias the high priest came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullus. These gave evidence to the governor against Paul. You see, in five days, the Jewish leaders had hired a Roman lawyer and prepared, prepared their case and appeared before Felix. They had hired a Roman. Like I said, they, they had upped their game. Uh, the prosecution was headed by the high priest and Tertullus. So they all come, they want to shut the mouth of Paul. They want to spread, they, they, they want to stop the spread of Christianity. And in verse two, we see the nauseating lying and flattery of uh, the attorney Tertullus, the way he speaks to, to uh, Governor Felix, verse two. And when he was called on Tertullus, began his accusation, saying, Seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity is being brought to this nation by your foresight. 
okay. Uh, he's, he's, he's greasing the pole. Uh, in verse 3, we accept it always in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. In verse 4, nevertheless, not to be tedious to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. So we, we see here that Tertullus is, like I said, greasing the pole. He's throwing all of these, uh, these this flattering um, uh, words toward, toward uh, Felix to get Felix in the mood to be persuaded to his thoughts, to their accusations against Paul. Uh, they want Paul silenced forever. They want his message for uh, silence, and they wanted Paul destroyed. Verse 5, for we have found this man a plague. Okay, they, they felt uh, Paul to be an insurrectionist, a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world. He was riotous and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Okay, so he's he's saying Paul's a bad guy. Paul is out here. He's inciting people to riot. Now, we must remember Paul didn't do any of these things. He simply went to the temple in Jerusalem to worship as this was his desire. In verse 6, he even tried to profane the temple, meaning desecration of the temple. And we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our laws. So here... Uh, they were lying, lying, lying about Paul. Paul didn't desecrate the temple, but I think what they meant by that was he did bring a Gentile convert with him to the temple, uh, which to them was desecration. Verse 7, But the commander Lysias came by and with great violence took him out of our hands. Well, that's the centurion Lyser Lyserius. Lysias, uh, who heard what was going on, heard about the commotion, and said, hey, no, this man cannot be just put to death arbitrarily. We have Roman law, the Pax Romana. <clears throat> Eight, commanding his accusers to come to you. By examining him yourself, you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. So, by examining Paul, you see that everything that we've told you about him, what have they told him? That he's a plague. That's the creator of dissension, okay, throughout all the world, and that he is a ringleader of the Nazarenes, okay? So the Jews are furious that Licinius, by the way, the Roman centurion, had transferred Paul by night and foiled their plot to kill him. Yet, and I failed to mention that, but yeah, they did. Lysias, and, but see, the reason Lysias did this was, one, he was responsible for any prisoner under his care. That was the Roman law. But even most importantly, Paul had told Lysias that he was a Roman citizen, and Romans could not be crucified or just put to death arbitrarily. They even had the right to see Caesar, so... This is uh, um, uh, very important. Lysias did not want to die, okay? But he's a military man, so he says, hey, these folks are coming to get Paul, but we're going to get Paul out of here. These folks have sworn to kill Paul. We, I'm, I'm going to get him out of here, which is what he did. And uh, 9, and the Jews also assented, saying that these things were true. So their hired Roman attorney gives their point across and the Jewish leaders agreed to what he said. In other words, what they said, their, Paul, their charges against Paul were first of all political treason, that Paul was insurrectionist. Two, that he spread religious heresy. He was a ringleader of a rebellious sect. And three, temple desecration, a des desecrator of the temple. And uh, so this, they, they, this is what they had planned and plotted. And uh, so verse 10, then Paul, after the governor had nodded to him, Paul now will tell the truth in his defense. After the governor nodded to him, Paul nodded to him uh, to speak, answered, Paul answering now. See, Tertullus has spoken, now Paul speaks. And by the way, when Paul speaks, he does not flatter or lie about Felix's accomplishments, okay? 
he says, this is Paul speaking, and as much as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer of myself. So he's not, flatter, he's not flattering uh, Felix. He's just acknowledging uh, Felix as the presider over this, this, sir, this, uh, uh, this uh, trial. Uh, he's acknowledging his right to be judge over these proceedings. In verse 11, Paul continues, because you may ascertain that it is no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. He's saying, how could I? I've, it's only been 12 days. How could I plan and seek to execute a rebellion against Rome and against the, uh, the Jewish leaders? And uh, uh, he says, and I went up to Jerusalem to worship. So he's saying here, I came to worship, not cause a disturbance. See, he's, he's basically making it plain that what these guys are doing, these, these accusers are wrong and they're lying. Verse 12, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone, nor inciting the people, neither in the synagogue nor in the city. They had no cause to accuse him of treason. And verse 13, not nor can they prove the things for which they now accuse me. In other words, uh, they're the ones guilty of what they've done. They can't even prove these things they accuse me of. And verse 14, But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. So he said, I'm not an insurrection. I'm not the leader of a sect, but I am a member of the way. I am a Christian. I do believe in Jesus as a fulfillment of our law. Uh, excuse me, saints. And verse 15. And I hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there would be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Paul's con confession and genuine worship of God, because he has said in verse 14, So I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which was written in the law and the prophets. And he believes that Jesus is the fulfillment of these things. And 16, And for this I myself always strive to have conscience to have a conscience without a f offense toward God and man. In this I can openly say, and this I can openly confess, because I actually do believe in God, and so I'm trying to live out my faith. That way I can stand before God with a clean heart. Um, and 17, now after many years I came to bring alms and offerings to my nation. He came for the purpose of bringing monies to the Jerusalem church who was badly suffering for monies. Uh, and he said, 18, in the midst of which some Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with a multitude nor with tumult. So there were these Grecian Jews who came who could not stand Paul and they came to accuse him. 19, they ought to have been here before you to object as if they had anything against me. So these ones who started it uh, aren't the people that even showed up to accuse him. 20, or else those who are here themselves say, if they had found any wrongdoing in me, they, in me while I stood before the consul. 21, unless it is for this one statement that I cried out staring, standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead and I am being judged by you this day. So you said, it, if they're actually trying to get me uh, for uh, preaching the gospel, well, that's what I've been doing. And 22, and when Felix had heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will make a decision on your case. Felix knows better than still pursue his greed. Because back in those days, they were waiting for the plaintiff uh, to slip some dollars to the governor and he'll rule in your favor. Uh, and so 23, and he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty. 
and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. So Felix is making it really more comfortable for Paul uh, being uh, in, in captivity. And uh, 24, and after some time, the Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish and sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ Jesus. Well, we, we see here that uh, Drusilla is quite a woman. You know, she's she's there with Paul. Uh, she was a mo. She had good motives. She she had faith in Christ Jesus. Nor was she a seeker of money. She came to support her husband. Paul shared the Christian walk of fella, of of holiness, but Felix trembled when convicted and proposed decision again. We see this in verse six. Um, meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul, remember this is like that bribe, that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often and conversed with him. After two years, Porcius Festus succeeded Paul, and Paul, wanting to be the Jews a favor, left Paul, uh, and uh, Felix, waiting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. So we see here that Felix was actually waiting for a uh, for a bribe when that didn't show up he said well i'm gonna kill keep him here so the uh the jews do not riot and this gives him some time uh to see if any of the romans show up so saints that's our text we're leaving paul with that uh and then uh, next week we can move on to uh, verse 25 i believe it is Yep, verse 25. So, saints, what is it that we learn from our lesson this morning about the courage of impelling truth? Well, there's about four lessons we can apply to our daily living. The first one uh, is which Paul always strived for. Always keep a clear conscience before God and man. Don't lie. Don't stretch things. Tell people the truth sometimes even if it hurts. It's very important that, that Paul understands this because Paul is falsely accused and as believers we would be falsely accused as well. But we should never respond sinfully but tell the truth even if it hurts. Amen. Uh, our second lesson, always speak the truth in every situation. Paul always spoke the truth both the things he was accused of and the things he was not. Members of St. Philip and those who will never be. In other words, never lie to defend yourself, especially when you're falsely accused. But hold the truth about his, about Paul's actions. You can hold the truth about our actions. He was accused of being a Christian and he admitted it. However, when we slip and sin, we ask forgiveness of God. So. Uh, we always need to speak in, in truth in every situation as Dr. Luther commanded us. Now verse 3, stay in God's word so your life will be in alignment with his. And we see that, that Paul is, I mean God is working out everything for Paul's life, for Paul's confession. We should do the same thing, staying in the word so we can recognize what God's word is and we won't be duped. And uh, our final lesson, remember the reality of eternity and the coming judgment. That's what pushed Paul. The reality of knowing that we just can't keep doing things the same way. We have to do things differently. And that God will provide. So, uh, saints, bless and keep all of you. Our worship service is about to begin now at 11 o'clock. And uh, so we also have Bible study every Wednesday at noon and every Sunday. Uh, at 9:30, and then we have the message at uh, 11. But you can ask, and you can answer uh, the face page around 11. So, saints, I hope this has been beneficial to you. It's been good.